Good afternoon. On today's Angry Bulletin, NASA has done an excellent job in recent years of conditioning us to be suspicious and a little bit concerned anytime they don't talk to us about a launch that seems to be experiencing problems or a post-launch mission that might be running into some issues. Yesterday, it turned out that It was much ado about nothing. At least that appears to be the case. The Cygnus resupply ship experiencing some minor problems while attempting to enter the proper trajectory to intercept the International Space Station. And 12 hours of silence following this as NASA and Northrop Grumman worked through their problems, fired a couple of corrective Delta V burns to get the ship back on track, and... No problem. It intercepted the ISS, was captured by the Canadarm, and supplies are being unloaded as I'm recording this. But as NASA once again makes success in space look easy and makes me look pretty foolish given what I reported yesterday, well, my concerns about Starliner, and indeed everybody's concerns about Starliner, have turned out to not just be well-founded, but we actually underestimated how big the problem actually is. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to another Angry Bulletin here on The Angry Astronauts. And it turns out that I'm probably going to be reporting about Starliner at least a few more times before NASA finally scraps this project. Way back in June, I speculated that Starliner was never going to be safe enough for the astronauts to take back to Earth for a successful re-entry, and so therefore a Crew Dragon rescue looked like the only realistic possibility. And even though for weeks and weeks NASA stubbornly maintained that Starliner would be able to do the job, they're finally beginning to see sense on all of this. But it turns out that NASA has been keeping a secret from all of us for a considerable amount of time about the real reason that NASA and Boeing are very hesitant to allow Starliner to attempt to return autonomously while the astronauts return safely on a Crew Dragon. And it turns out that trying to let Starliner return on its own could be far more dangerous than risking Butch and Sunni's lives on this broken spacecraft. Let me explain. Just recently, several independent sources, or rather several unidentified sources at Boeing, informed Ars Technica that the necessary software for Starliner to carry out an autonomous return to Earth was never installed on the spacecraft prior to launch. Let me say that again. Boeing did not install the necessary software for an autonomous return to Earth in the event that the crew was either unable or unwilling to ride the spacecraft back to Earth from the ISS. It was never going to be capable of doing that because it didn't have the necessary software. So this ship, from the moment that it departed, was never going to be able to deal with this problem at least not currently. Let me go ahead and talk a little bit further about exactly what Ars Technica is reporting. And this has apparently been confirmed by a number of other news sources in recent days. Quote, three separate well-placed sources have confirmed to Ars that the current flight software on board Starliner cannot perform an automated undocking from the space station and entry into Earth's atmosphere. At first blush, this seems seems absurd. After all, Boeing's Orbital Flight Test 2 mission in May of 2022 was a fully automated test of the Starliner vehicle. During this mission, the spacecraft flew up to the space station without crew on board,
board and then return to Earth six days later. Although the 2022 flight test was completed by a different Starliner vehicle, it clearly demonstrated the ability of the program's flight software to autonomously dock and return to Earth. Boeing did not respond to a media query about why this capability was removed for the crew flight test. It is not clear what change Boeing officials made to the vehicle or its software in the two years prior to the launch of Wilmore and Williams. It's possible that the crew has to manually press an undock button in the spacecraft, or the purely autonomous software was removed from coding on board Starliner to simplify its software package. Regardless, sources describe the process to update the software on Starliner as non-trivial and significant, and that it could take up to four weeks to correct the issue. Of course, that's all assuming that Boeing and NASA can remotely upload the necessary software and it's going to work on the first attempt. Now, here's why this is so incredibly dangerous. Let us assume for a moment that Boeing is able to upload the necessary software and that all of it gets installed successfully and then they attempt to undock Starliner with no crew on board as a backup in case Starliner should run into any problems or malfunctions during the undocking process, which by the way, makes use of Boeing's faulty thrust in the middle of that process. So if Starliner to, or to experience a significant malfunction, a misfiring of those engines, or a software failure that causes a loss of control on the vehicle, in theory, it could collide with the ISS and create a disaster that's far more significant than the loss of two astronauts during a re-entry, as ridiculous as that might sound. And now it becomes really apparent as to why Boeing and NASA have been been so hesitant to allow Butch and Sunni to go home on a crew dragon and to abandon Starliner to an automated return, because an automated return could be a lot more dangerous to everybody. It is beyond comprehension that all of this was allowed to happen. And why? Well, presumably because the process of uploading this new software package, or who knows, maybe this software may not function properly yet. Now, keep in mind, a lot of changes have been made to this spacecraft in order to make it more flight worthy. So there may have been changes made that have not yet been fully tested. And all of that costs money. And Boeing decided that since there was going to be a crew on board, there was no necessity in spending additional funds on an automated system that was not going to be needed. So here's the bottom line, as ridiculous as this might sound. Not only do we have two stranded astronauts on the ISS, we have a stranded space capsule that is currently incapable of leaving the ISS. And since it's stuck there, occupying that docking port, the new Crew-9 mission cannot be carried out. It will have no open docking ports to take advantage of in order to unload replacements for the current crew that's on the ISS right now. So many consequences associated with all of these incredibly bad decisions. It is difficult to believe that NASA allowed this flight to happen without the necessary flight software on board. Did they just assume that there was absolutely not going to be any problems, that there was no chance that this scenario might crop up? I mean, that's incredibly short-sighted given all the problems that Starliner has had up to this point if they were thinking that way. Just insane. So at this point, it appears that Crew-9 at the very earliest is going to be heading up to the ISS by September 24th, which presumably will give Boeing enough time to upload the necessary autonomous software package to Starliner and perform the necessary tests in order to allow Starliner to safely detach from the station. Once again, I think safely detach is a very optimistic term here, but it's about the safest solution. I think that we can go forward with at this point. I really think it's still better than trying to set Butch and Sunni back on this horrendously faulty spacecraft. 
You know, just a little while ago, I was a bit annoyed that NASA was planning to send up the Crew-9 mission before the FAA investigation into Falcon 9's anomaly was officially complete. To me, that seemed to be strangely cavalier compared to the extremely obsessive safety protocols that NASA has been observing ever since we lost Columbia and the crew on board. But at this point, given this latest stunt, with Starliner, I'm really beginning to doubt just how concerned NASA really is with crew safety and whether the financial considerations of their favorite contractors might take precedent over the lives of their astronauts. Thank you very much for watching. I would like to thank the following incredible folks who have recently joined up on Patreon. Wrath908, Bala Benedict, Michelle Snyder, Mike Binkley, Gregory Hardy, and David Hender, who just joined at the Starship level. By the way, David, you get to select a video topic, so make sure to send me a message with whatever video you would like to see in the future on this channel. And by the way, I accept ideas and suggestions from all my Patreon members. You don't have to hit that high level in order to get one of your videos made. It's just guaranteed at that level. Also, Russell Miller, thank you very much for supporting me. Peter Green updated his membership to a higher level. So much support, and I would not be able to run this channel without you, so thanks so much. If you'd like to join them, please check the description for more details, and as always, stay angry about space.